Uh, my name is John Bellamy and I'm uh, an instructor here at uh, West Point on our three-day basic skills course which takes absolute beginners through the basic skills of blacksmithing so that if they want to take it up as a hobby or even to make a living out of it eventually then this will give them a firm foundation to uh, take it forward as far as they want to go. Um, we start off by introducing people to the anvil, the hearth, uh, different metal that we use and then we get straight down to uh, the skills that's involved. The skills that's involved are we start off short amount to draw down to a piece of metal because it doesn't matter how heavy the metal is, the actual skills content are the same. So we start off showing them how to draw down to a, a point, then we move from the point to making a, a little scroll end, introduce them to doing some jigs, narrow little ribbon point, putting a bend in it, and then putting another bend in it. So they've actually got, at the end of the morning, around about half past 11, 12 o'clock, they've actually got a barbecue butler. It can either be a pint pot holder or a wine glass holder. Uh, it could also be used for a bird feeder or for holding a lantern or putting plant pots in. So it's a multi-purpose thing. The thing is that you're getting the basic ideas and the skills and this is just what's developed from them. After we've done that, we move on and make a little toasting fork. <coughs> it's not a toasting fork as such, it's the skills that we use. We start off and we show them, mark him out and make an eye freehand on the anvil which you've just seen me do over there and then from that we then go on and put a twist into the handle like we've got here uh, from then we then reverse it work on the bottom end split this out draw them down neck this piece in blend it in so it gives it a little bit of elegance and then shape the profile of the forks whatever we want and then what we would do is to put a, a non-toxic finish on it which is basically sunflower oil rather than a peanut oil or a vegetable oil or something that's non-toxic and they're going to get no reactions from whoever's going to be using it and then that is uh, put on it's like uh, oil in a wok really or any cast iron stuff and that's then ready to use or not once they've done that then <coughs> the end of the day towards the end of the day we'll make a little hook and up to now we've not had to use tongs but this is a little exercise using tongs developing what we've already done which is making a little curl bending, bit of flattening on the side uh, flattening this bit down cutting it off and punching a hole in and then we've got a nice little hook to make uh, so that we can hold the uh, little bit on that they've already made and then that's a complete item and then on the Saturday and the Sunday we'll go on and make one of these the Saturday we'll make the back plate um, again it's cut out, hot chiselled square hole punched in for the tenon, round hole, split, scroll top on it, countersunk on the back for the riveting and then turn that round, <coughs> hot cut the bottom end out which gives you these nice little angles on the end, punch a hole through it ready for a fixing and then that's the back plate done. We then move on, uh, upset the metal on the arm um, so we've got a, a nice base for it to fit onto. Um, forge your tenon on the end that passes through the hole and then that is cut off and we can uh, rivet that on a bit later. Before we do that though, uh, we work the length out that we need for the basket size that we're going to put onto it. Um, work out how much we need on that, cut it off to size, forge this hook down, which again is just a confidence boosting exercise and very similar to what we've already done. So it's just boosting people's confidence uh, and ability to do things. Then when we've done that, uh, we'll pass this through, uh, saw the rivet off, talk about riveting bits and pieces on, saw the rivet off to length uh, of the tenon, hot rivet the tenon in place, making sure that it's square both vertically and uh, to the back plate and forward. And then once we've done that, that's Saturday out of the way, we'll move on, <coughs> we'll talk about different scrolls, where we should use them, and why it should be used, which is safe, which is not safe and various little drawbacks with them and then we'll produce a leaf end scroll and then at the other end we'll work out the sizes of scrolls and talk about that and at the other end we'll put a, a plain 
Um, fishtail scroll, which is equal and on the center line there. We'll then put them in place, mark it out and rivet it, making sure that the top of the rivet maintains that nice little dome and doesn't look like it's been hammered out uh, against something solid, but it blends in nice and neatly. Uh, rivet that off, dress him up at the back where he's gone through. That'll be put in as a cold rivet rather than a hot rivet. And then once we've done that, we will forge a mandrel up, try forge a collar around the mandrel and put the collar onto the top to hold the scroll in place. And then that will pull itself up tightly. You'll hear it tinging as it, uh, it contracts and holds it in place. And that basically is then finished. And it's ready for the final finish, whatever you want to do on it.